I was um, walking around last night. I came here last night and I met a few friends of mine for dinner. I was walking around and just under the stars, I had this really clear sense of what a sacred place this is. Um, it was strange. I just felt really peaceful and uh, it's, it's a special place here. And I'm glad it's still here. Um, so um, I guess uh, maybe I don't need to tell you, hopefully not, that climate change is real. It's caused by humans. It's bad and it's getting worse. And every single one of my day-to-day -day scientific colleagues in earth science would agree with those statements. I, I don't have any day-to-day -day colleagues who would disagree with any one of those statements. But you guys are experiencing it firsthand. You know that the imprint of climate change is deepening in the West, just as it is in the rest of the world. You've experienced record drought. You've experienced record heat waves. And you've experienced record wildfires. What's truly terrifying is that this isn't the new normal. Sometimes I hear people say, you know, this is the new normal. And that's what I find really terrifying. What we have is a trend, and the nature of trends is to trend. They keep going up until the root cause of the thing that's making them go up stops. All right? And we know what is causing this. What's causing this is burning fossil fuel. Until we stop doing that, what we're experiencing now is going to get worse and worse. That's why we have to do everything we can in our power to stop burning fossil fuel. We're now at one degree Celsius of global warming, and I hope we never find out what three degrees or five degrees is like. What I know for sure, you can forget about all the complex science because you know, there's something that you and I both agree on for absolute sure. It's that these climate impacts will keep getting worse until we stop burning fossil fuel. There's no debate on that whatsoever. Globally, 17 of the 18 hottest years on record occurred since 2001. So each of the last 17 years has been one of the 18 hottest. That's remarkable. It's remarkable that a trend like that can come out so clearly from the ups and downs of annual temperatures, right? There's a lot of shifting of energy between the climate system, between air and the ocean, between the land and the ice system. So that makes noise. And for that trend, 17 of the last 18 years, 17 yeah, have been the hottest at their time on record, right? So 2017 was the second hottest. It was the hottest without an El Nino. And it was, followed, it was following a blistering hot 2016. 2017 was also the worst fire year on record for California, with over 10,000 structures destroyed, costs projected to creep into the hundreds of billions of dollars, and 46 deaths. So it doesn't take a scientist to realize that hotter and drier means more wildfire risk. Last summer was California's warmest on record. Wildfires, wildfires throughout the, the West are projected to get worse and worse as things continue to get warmer. And of course, there were wildfires in California before climate change was occurring. What climate change does is it increases the threat, pushing us into a new regime. Our ecosystems aren't adapted to this new regime. And so as long as they're there, as long as there's fuel to burn, it's going to keep burning. Climate change is the issue that underpins all other issues. I'm not even sure it qualifies as an issue. We're talking about a planet we can live on. We're talking about the very foundations of civilization. The reason civilization flourished over the last 10,000 years was because of this stable climate. And now we're changing the climate far faster than any time in the geologic record. We're pushing the climate to a place it hasn't been for millions of years, a place that we're not even close to being adapted for. Measured against any relevant human timescale, this warmer world we're making will be permanent. The CO2 we're emitting will stay in our atmosphere for thousands of years. The ongoing mass extinction could mean impoverished biodiversity for millions of years, up to 10 million years. So it's bad, but it's not too late. Holding warming to two degrees would be much, much better than letting it get to three degrees or five degrees. So what are we going to do about it? What can we do about it? 
What can one person do about this overwhelming global problem? It's an extraordinary moment. People around the world are finally waking up and realizing that this is indeed a climate emergency. We need action at all scales, from individual to community to municipal to state to national. I've cut my own emissions by 90% because I find it increasingly unacceptable to burn fossil fuels. And also because I believe that action at the individual and the community level is needed to catalyze shift, to catalyze a cultural shift and make space for larger collective change. And you know what I found? Life with a tenth of fossil fuel is pretty awesome. It's not like wearing a hair shirt. It's not like making all these sacrifices. There's a lot of things that have gotten better in my life by burning less fossil fuel. Less fossil fuel means more connection to our communities, to our friends and loved ones, and to the earth. Also, it means more connection to ourselves. It has been a fun adventure for me, and on balance, not a sacrifice. And as systems catch up, it's only going to get easier. So we need to shift the culture. We get, need to get everybody around us, all the masses of people, caring as much about climate change as we do. So how do we do this? One thing that each one of us can do is simply to burn less fossil fuel. That's what's causing the problem. So fly less, bike more. Engage in what I call conspicuous non-consumption. Don't hide your burning of less fossil fuel uh, away from your neighbors. Don't be preachy about it, but let them know what you're doing. Let them know with a smile. Let them know how the changes you're making are making your life happier. And keep track of what you're doing. Actually quantify how much that you're decreasing so that you know which changes are big, which changes are small. I believe this kind of self-change is more important than you might think. It's a way to push for the collective change we desperately need. It's a way to send a clear message to society. Burning fossil fuel causes dire harm. Burning fossil fuel should no longer be socially acceptable. Each one of us is only one person. It can feel overwhelming. But each of us has power. As we join together, our power increases exponentially. So help each other. Talk to each other. Find community and do all you can. Get inspired. Don't get depressed about this. Get inspired. Help each other. And most importantly, reduce your burn. It's the missing link for shifting culture. We've tried dealing with this in various ways. Scientists have tried giving facts to the public. The United Nations has had meeting after meeting after meeting where they fly in and talk about stuff and make promises that they break. This stuff hasn't been working. I believe the missing link is for normal people, people like you and me, to burn less in our own lives and to start waking up everybody else that this is the change that has to happen. By burning less yourself, you help inspire the people around you and you create a demand for collective change. And of course, vote. Get excited about voting as a community. Let's demand leaders who respect science. Let's demand good leaders, leaders with heart, leaders who care about more than just making profit, leaders who will take firm action on climate, such as steadily rising carbon fee and dividend. So yes, I am sounding the alarm. And more of my scientific colleagues are doing, joining me in doing that. We're scientists, but we're also citizens. We're also parents. I'm standing here sounding this alarm out of love. Love for my dear children. Love for all of you. Love for this place. Love for every being without a voice. Each of us must do everything we can. Together, let's spark a climate revolution. Thanks.